Last time we talked about bar plots and pie charts, and those were graphs for qualitative data. Today we'll talk about the types of graphs we would make for quantitative data. There's two situations that I want you to be aware of. The first situation here, the data here represents the number of cars in a household. So we went to a bunch of households and asked people, how many cars do you have in your house? And these were the answers. If I look at my data set, notice that there's not a lot of different answers. I see a zero, a one, a two, a three, a four, and that's it. So that's, that's all the possible answers in my data set. So this situation is a situation where we have discrete data with just a few possible values. So in this situation where we don't have that many different answers, we can just list all the answers. So we said we saw some zeros, some ones, some twos, some threes, and some fours. And let me uh, title this column. This data represents number of cars, which means the zero, one, two, three, and four represents number of cars. And we'll find the frequencies. Frequency means how many, so we're just gonna count how many zeros are in my data set, how many ones, and so on. Now, on your lab, we're gonna use R to help us count, so let me just tell you what the frequencies are. If you count, there are nine zeros, there are 24 ones, 19 twos, five threes, and three fours. And that's how you find the frequencies for situation one. I'm gonna call it ungrouped data. Now, let me skip to situation two so that I can tell you the difference. Now, situation two, the data we have here is number of hours per week that students spend studying. So we asked a bunch of students, how many hours per week do you study? And these are the answers. Now notice, if I look at the, the data set here, there's a whole bunch of different answers, right? This is actually continuous data. And continuous data, remember, um, is data where you can have any possible decimal as an answer. So 5.138 makes sense as a number of hours. So when you have continuous data, you can't possibly list all the decimals. They're just too many. So in a situation where either you have continuous data or if you have discrete data where there's just too many possible values, what we'll do is we'll break up the data into groups or chunks or ranges like these. So this situation is called group data where we're breaking up the data into groups or chunks or ranges. So here I broke up the data uh, into chunks for you. And let's actually title this, uh, this column. And the question is, what do these numbers represent? These numbers represent the number of hours spent per week studying. So this is number of hours per week. And we're gonna find our frequencies also. So we're gonna count how many data values are between two and 14.9. How many data values are between 15 and 27.9. So I'm gonna tell you the frequencies, but if you actually do count, uh, you'll find that there are four data values that are between two and 14.9. There are 10 between 15 and 27.9. There's 13 between 28 and 40.9, nine between 41 and 53.9, and two between 54 and 66.9. Okay, and that's frequencies for the grouped data situation. Now, the rest of the table um, is computed the same way for both situations. So let me just explain it for situation one, and I'll just tell you the answers for the situation two because the, the process is exactly the same. Now, just like when we talked about um, qualitative data, frequency, right, we, we know that there's nine households that have zero cars. Question is, that we often ask is, what percent does that represent? So what percent of households have zero cars? And that's called a relative frequency.
And the way you calculate the relative, relative frequency, the first thing you need to do is find out how many people total in your sample. Now, or how many households in this case, in your sample. You could go and just count one, two, three, four, five, all the way through. But if you know the frequencies, um, if you add up the frequencies, that's gonna tell you how many people total in your sample. Because these frequencies are counting how many people. In this case, we're counting how many households. All right, so let's add up our frequencies. Once again, the calculator that I'm gonna recommend is the Desmos Scientific Calculator. Uh, there'll be a link on your lab, and it looks like this. So add up the frequencies. Nine plus 24 plus 19 plus five plus three. 60. So there's 60 households in my sample here. To find the relative frequencies, you're going to take each frequency and divide it by the total. So the first one, nine over 60. 0 0.15. Next up, 24. Divide by 60. 0.4. Next up, 19 divided by the total. So 19 divided by 60. Here I do get a long decimal. Remember, we're going to round to three decimal places. This is 0 0.317. Next up, 5 divided by 60. Round it to three decimal places. This is 0 0.083. And then finally, three divided by the total number of people, 0 0.05. And then remember, in the previous lecture, when we talked about um, the quality of data, I said, if you end up with decimals that, that end, that, are, that you, know, you don't have to round, add on, add on zeros at the end so that um, every number has the same number of decimal places. So I'm going to add on until I get three decimal places on each one. And that just is just going to help me when I actually have to compare. So these are the relative frequencies. The next thing I want to calculate for Quantso, we, we calculate frequency and relative frequency for qualitative data also. Now for quantitative data, there's two other things that I can calculate. The first of which is cumulative frequency. And you've heard the word cumulative before. So at the end of every semester, when you get your GPA, you have two GPAs. You have a regular GPA and you have a cumulative GPA. So your regular GPA is your GPA for that semester. Your cumulative GPA includes all your classes in previous semesters also, right? So it includes everything before also. Um, many of you have asked me, is the final exam cumulative? So what you're asking me is, does the final exam cover everything before also? So everything from the beginning of, of the semester also. So cumulative frequency, the first cumulative frequency is gonna be the same as the regular frequency. Now for the next cumulative frequency, we're going to take the 24, but also include everything before it. So I'm gonna do 24 plus nine. Okay, so 24 plus nine. which is 33. The next cumulative frequency, 19 plus everything before it, so 19 plus 24 plus nine. Fifty-two. Next, five plus 19 plus 24 plus nine. Fifty-seven. Next, three plus five plus 19 plus 24 plus nine. And as a shortcut, at each step, what you can do is just take your cumulative frequency because this 57, remember, already includes five, 19, 24, nine, and you just add on the next frequency. So you just do 57 plus three, or you can just do three plus everything else. I'll do it the long way. Three plus five plus 19 plus 24 plus nine. 
and that you get 60. And that's the cumulative frequency. We'll talk about the interpretation of this uh, a little bit later on. And then finally, um, we can also talk about the cumulative relative frequency. And anytime you see the word relative frequency, you're basically converting to a percent. So we're going to take all these cumulative frequencies and divide it by the total number of households or people in the sample. So 9 divided by the total, 9 divided by 60. Zero point one five. Thirty three divided by sixty. Zero point five five. Next up, fifty two divided by sixty. Rounded to three decimal places, this is zero point. 867. Next up, 57 divided by 60. 0 0.95. Next up, 60 divided by 60. 60. I should know this one. This is 1. And then just like before, um, I want to add on zeros at the end so that everything has three decimal places. So I'm going to add on a zero right here, a zero right here. 867 already has three, nine, five, zero, one point zero zero. Okay, and that's just going to help me if I need to compare these numbers uh, later on. Let me now fill in the table for situation two. The process is exactly the same. So let me just show you the answers. Thank you. All right, and that's the, the table for uh, situation two. Now, there's some vocabulary that I need to introduce for the situation two, where we're talking about grouped data. And grouped data, remember, is we're just breaking up the data into ranges here. How many classes are there? Okay, so classes are just ranges. So this is just asking how many ranges are there. That's one range, two, three, four, five. There's five ranges. What is the class width? Uh, before I talk about class width, let me actually introduce some more terminology here. These ranges or classes, right? So these are called classes. These classes, they have a low number and a high number. The low number is called the lower limits. Okay, so these are the low number in each range. The high number in each range are called the upper limits. Now, the class width is the distance from a lower limit to the next lower limit. Okay, so how far is it from a lower to the next lower? So how far is it from 2 to 15? How far is it from 15 to 28? So how far is it from 2 to 15? How, how would you find that? Well, what you can do is take 15, which is the next lower, subtract off the previous lower. So 15 minus 2. And you get 13. And you can do that anywhere. So pick any of the lowers, 28, and then subtract the previous lower. So 28 minus 15 and you'll see that it's also 13. 41 minus 28, also 13. 54 minus 41, also 13. You can actually also do it with the uppers. So if I take any of the uppers, say 40.9, subtract 27.9, the previous upper, also 13. So the 13 is really telling me 
that in this table, the lowers are going up by 13, the uppers are going up by 13. So everything in my table is going up by the same amount, and that's the class width. Next up, midpoints. The formula to find the midpoints is lower plus next lower divided by 2. That's the formula. So we're going to find the midpoint, and th these refer to the midpoints of each of these ranges. Okay. So you should have one midpoint for each range. So we have one, two, three, four, five, five ranges or classes. I should have five midpoints. The first one, lower plus next lower divided by two. Okay, so that means I'm gonna do lower, so two, plus the next lower, 15, divided by two. All right, let's, uh, let me take out my calculator. And so I, I recommend using the decimal scientific calculator because you can just type it in exactly like you see it here. So I'm going to type in the fraction. There's a fraction button in the right hand side here. Fraction up top, 2 plus 15. And the bottom, 2. Okay, type it in exactly like you see it here. And I get 8.5. The next midpoint is going to be 15 plus 28 divided by 2. So 15 plus the next lower, which is 28, divided by 2. All right, on my calculator, fraction up top, 15 plus 28. On the bottom, 2. 21.5. Next one, 28 plus the next lower, 20, 41, divided by 2. So 28 plus 41 over 2. Okay, fraction up top, 28 plus 41 over 2. 34.5. Next one, 41 plus 54 divided by 2. Fraction, 41 plus 54 on top, 2 on the bottom, 47.5. Okay, we're not done. So I said you should have one midpoint for each range, okay? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ranges. I have so far 1, 2, 3, 4 midpoints. I need one more midpoint for this last range. So 54 plus, plus what? There's no more lowers. So what do you do? Well, the next lower should come right after this upper. So what's what's the number that just that is right after 66.9? 67, right? So you can do it that way. So 54 plus 67 over 2. 60.5. Okay, that's one way to do it. Another way to do it is we know the class width, right? So if once you know how much each of the lowers are going up by, right? We know it's going from 2 to 15 is 13, 15 to 28 is 13. That's the class width. Once you know the class width, everything on your table, well, not everything, not, not these, but everything on this side is going to go up by 13 also. So notice that 8.5 to 21.5, right? If I subtract those, so 1.5 minus 8.5, 13, right? If I subtract 34.5 minus 21.5, it's 13, okay? The midpoints are also going up by 13, going up by 13. So what does this mean? This means that we can actually save some time. So all you really need to do is use the formula to get that first midpoint. Once you know that first midpoint and you know the class width, all you need to do is just keep on adding 13, right? So 8.5, add 13. It's 21.5, okay? 
Start with 21.5, add 13 again. 34.5, okay? Add 13 again. So 34.5 plus 13, 47.5. So that's another way, a quicker way to get the midpoints. Use the formula, get that first one, figure out the class width, which is just the distance from a lower to the next lower, right? Subtract those, 15 minus two, that'll give you the class width. Once you know your class width, just keep on adding the class width and that will get you the rest of the midpoints. The main type of graphs for quantitative data are the histograms. And there's two variations depending on whether you're in situation one with the ungrouped data or situation two with the group data. Let me start with situation one. So situation one, ungrouped data, is a situation where the possible values are not that many so that you can list them all. Okay, so if you can list them all, we're gonna start off by putting all those possible values on the x-axis. So on my x-axis, my possible values are zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay, and let me title my uh, x-axis. These numbers represent number of cars. So my x-axis is number of cars. Now this is called a frequency histogram, which means I should be putting frequency on the y-axis. And if I look at my frequencies, I have 9, 24, 19, 5, 3. So when I number my frequencies, I need to go all the way up to 24. Now you can count by ones, you can count by twos, by fives, by tens, as long as you get up to uh, that 24. So I'm gonna count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. Okay, and then for each, uh, for each value here, you're gonna make a bar. So zero, frequency is nine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a bar of height nine. Next up is the one, frequency 24. I need a bar of height 24. Okay, couple things to note here. Unlike the bar plot in the previous lecture when we, we were talking about uh, qualitative data, notice that the bars touch, there's no gaps. Okay, so that's one thing. And also notice that the numbers on the x-axis are in the center of the bar. Okay, so this is true for ungrouped data. Next up is two, frequency is 19, so I need a bar height 19. Three, frequency is five. And then the four, frequency three. And to help my reader, uh, because sometimes the height is uh, hard to read, I'm gonna put the frequencies uh, on each bar. So the, the zero was supposed to be nine. The one was a 24. The two was a 19. The three was a five and then the, the four was a three. Okay, so once again, for ungrouped data, first of all, the bars should touch. Meaning there's, there's no gaps. Okay, this is different than a bar plot for qualitative data in the last lecture. And then for ungrouped data, the bars should be centered over the numbers on the x-axis. And that's a frequency histogram for the ungrouped data situation. Now let me skip over to the group data situation and let me show you what's different. Okay, group data situation. This was our situation where we had to break up the data into ranges here, okay? So when you have to break up the data into ranges, 
what you're going to put on the x-axis are the lower limits, which are the lower number in each range. So we're going to put 2, 15, 28, 41, 54. So 2, 15, 28, 41, 54. Okay. Once again, these are the, the lower limits. And let me also title what these numbers mean. So these numbers were number of hours per week. We're talking about a frequency histogram. That means we're going to put frequency on the, on the y-axis. Now for this situation, if I look at my frequencies, 4, 10, 13, 9, 2. So I need to get up to 13. Uh, this one, I can count by twos, I think. I'll count by twos. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. And now, the first frequency is a four, okay? This four represents the range two to 14.9. So when I make my bar, I want that bar to be over the range two to 14.9. So two to 14.9 is like two to the, just to the left of that 15. But I'm just gonna make it go all the way up to the 15. So our first bar is frequency four. My second frequency, 10, okay? That represents the range from 15 to 27.9. So basically from 15 to 28. So I need a bar height 10 from 15 to 28. Okay, so from 15 to 28, Height 10. Okay, notice the difference. Um, well, similarity, the bars touch. In the first situation, when we have ungrouped data, the bar is centered above the number or the numbers are centered on the bars. And that's because in that situation, the frequency nine represents just a zero, okay? So this bar goes just with the zero. Okay, and that's situation one, ungrouped data. Situation two, right, notice that the numbers are not in the center of the bars. And that's because in the group data situation, each frequency doesn't represent a single number, right? Each frequency represents a range of numbers so that each bar should be over that range. So the, the, the bar here is over that range. The next bar is over the next range. All right, so let's finish up this histogram. The next one is a 13. That represents the range 28 to 40.9, but on the picture, it's gonna be 28 to 41. So 28 to 41, height's supposed to be 13. Next one is nine, representing 41 to 54, 41 to 54, nine. And then we still have one more, right? I still have this two. So this two represents 54 to something. To height two. And you should put the number uh, that goes right here. So 54 to what? What would be the next lower limit? So there's a couple ways you can find out. The next lower limit, okay, we know that all these numbers are going up by 13. So the next one, should be just 13 away. So 54 plus 13, which is 67. Or we also, the other way we talked about on the previous page was the next lower limit should be just to the right of this last number here, 66.9. So the number just to the right of it will be 67. Okay, 67. And these are the lower limits. Now let me label the bars just to help my reader uh, figure out the height. The first one, 
was a 4 frequency. Next one was a 10, 13, 9, and 2. And that's a frequency histogram for the second situation of group data. And let me write down uh, the key points that I was talking about. Same as for both situations, the bars touch. No gaps. So for quantitative data, the bars touch. For qualitative data, when we, that we talked about in the last lecture, the bars have gaps. Okay, and that's for qualitative data. Now, for group data, the bars uh, are over ranges. I'm going to say the class ranges. Uh, numbers are not centered on bars. Uh, no numbers uh, centered on bars. Okay. So make sure you understand the difference between these two situations. The situation for ungrouped data, where you have the numbers at the center of the bars, and the situation for grouped data, where you have the, the bars over a range and you don't have any numbers at the center of the bars. Now, let me go back and do the other variation, relative frequency histograms for both situations. Now, the difference, the only difference is in a frequency histogram, you put the frequency on the y-axis. In a relative frequency histogram, you put relative frequency. That's the only difference. So relative frequency. Okay, we're in situation one here, so we're talking about these cars. Okay. Um, you can list out all possible values, so we're going to list them on the x-axis. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, I'm going to title the x-axis. These represent number of cars. Relative frequency. These are my decimals here, 0 0.150, 0 0.400, 317, and so on. Uh, the way I number relative frequency is the same for uh, in all cases. I'm just going to go by... Um, 0 0.100, 0 0.200, 0 0.300, 0 0.400, 0 0.500, 0 0 0 0.500, and so on. And I need to go up to 150, 400, 317, 400. So I think I'm good. And now my bars. The zero was 0 0.150. So I think of it as like 150. So 150 would be um, between a 100 and 200. And remember, this is situation one. Situation one, I'm going to have the numbers in the center of the bars. Next up, 400. Next up, 317, so 317, that should be right here. The 3, 083, 083, 83, so that should be below the 100. And then finally the 4, 050, that's 50, that should be below the 100 also. And then I'm going to label the bars with the relative frequencies. 0 0.150, 0 0.400, 0 0.317, 0 0.400, 0 0.050. 0 so once again, if you end up with decimals that, that are uh, where you don't have to round, my recommendation is add on zeros so that um, every decimal has the same number of decimal places. Um, in this case, every decimal has three decimal, pla three decimal places. Um, it's going to help you uh, 
compare and graph. Now, let's go to situation two and make a relative frequency histogram for this one. So I'm going to put relative frequency on the y-axis. This is situation two where I have grouped data, which just means that the data is broken up into ranges. This situation, we're going to put just the lower limits on the x-axis. So these are 2, 15, 28, 41, 54. 2, 15, 28, 41, 54. And then relative frequency, these are my decimals here. And I, I number them the same way uh, at all times. So I'm going to go up by 0 0.100, 0 0.200. So .400, and let's see, I need to get up to 342. So I think I'm good there. Now, first one, 105.105. Remember, this one goes with the range 2 to 15. So this, the bar should be above the range 2 to 15. 105. Okay, notice that there's no, no numbers. On, in, in the center of my bars, the bar is over the range 2 to 15. Next up is 263. That should be over the range 15 to 28. 15 to 28. 263. Next up is 0.342. That should be over the range 28 to 41. 342. Next up... 237, that's going to be over the range 41 to 53.9, which is about 54. So over 50, 41 to 54.237. Okay, I'm not done because I haven't uh, made a bar for this last one, which is 0 0.053. That should be over the range 54 to something. What is this something? Okay, 54 to the next lower limit. Next lower limit should be just right after this 66.9, which is 67. Or you can also get it by 54. These numbers are all going up by the same amount, so just add on that same amount. In this case, the numbers are going up by 13. So 54 plus 13 will be 67. And this last one will be 0 0.053, 53. That should be below the 100. And then I'm going to um, label my bars. The first bar is 0 0.105. Next bar, 0 0.263. Next one is 0 0.342. Next one is 0 0.237. And then 0 0.053. And then I should also title the bottom, which I forgot to do. Uh, these numbers represent it number of hours per week. Let's talk about how to interpret these graphs now. I'm back on the ungrouped data situation, and I want you to write a sentence interpreting the second bar on the histogram. So I'm talking about second bar, that's this 0 0.400, and this 24. So usually when I interpret, uh, I like to go back to the table. So let's go back to the table for this situation, which was on the first page. And I want to interpret the 24 and this 0 0.400, which is right here. So I want to interpret this 24 and this 0 0.400 frequency. So the type of sentence I want you to write is this 24 is, is counting how many, we're talking about households here. So how many households? So there's 24 households. And what's special about these households? So there's 24 households. What's special about these 24 households? They have one car. So 
So I'm looking for 24. And then what's special about them? They have one car. Now, the 0 0.400, so anytime we are uh, interpreting a relative frequency, right, I want you to convert it to a percent. So we're going to move the decimal point 2 to the right, which is the same thing as just multiplying by 100. Uh, 2 to the right, it's 40.0, so that's 40.0%. 40 so 40.0% of the households. And what's special about these 40%? These 40% have one car. 40% of the households have one car. So I'm looking for the 40% that you converted to a percent, and then what's special about the 40%? They have one car. Now, let's go to the ungrouped data situation. So, the, I mean, the group data situation. And in this situation, I'm looking for you to write a sentence interpreting the third bar on the histogram. So one, two, three, I'm talking about this point three, four, two, and this 13. Okay, let's go back to the table. So we wanna interpret the 13, which is this one, and the point three, four, two, which is right here. Okay, 13. So this is counting how many, so there's 13. What are we talking about here? These are coming from a sample of students. So this, there's 13 students. So the 13 is, there are 13 students. And what's special about these 13 students? These 13 students spin between 28 and 40.9 40, 40 hours per week studying. So these 13 students spin uh, between 28 and 40.9 hours per week studying. Okay, I'm looking for the 13, and then what's special about these 13? They spend between 28 and 40.9 hours per week studying. Now, the 0.342, which is right here, okay? Anytime we're interpreting a relative frequency, I want you to convert it to a percent. So multiply by 100, which is the same thing as moving the decimal point two to the right. So two to the right, it'll be 34.2. So 34.2% of students and what's special about these 34.2% students? They spend between 28 and 40.9 hours per week studying. So I'm looking for you to convert it to a percent and then tell me what's special about these 34%, 34.2%. Uh, they spend between 28 and 40.9 hours per week studying. Let's now talk about how to interpret the cumulative frequency and the cumulative relative frequency. And I wanna do this for both situations, the ungrouped data situation and the group data situation. Let's start off with the ungrouped data situation. So this is our situation with the households and how many cars each household has. And let's uh, interpret this 57 cumulative frequency and this 0 0.950 cumulative relative frequency. Now, this 57, remember, how did we get this 57? We got this 57 by adding the 5 with everything before it, right? So we did 5 plus 19 plus 24 plus 9. So this 57 is not just counting the number of people that have three cars. It also includes the number of people that have two cars, one car, zero car. So this 57 is counting the number of people who have three cars or less, okay? So we're gonna write there are 57, and I keep on saying people, but in that first situation, we we're talking about households. So there's 57 households, 
And what's special about these 57 households? These 57 households have three cars or less. So what I'm looking for is the 57. And what's special about these 57 households? They have three cars or less. So anytime you're, you're interpreting a cumulative frequency, you always have to throw in that or less phrase. Right, because cumulative means that it includes everything before it, right, or less. And now for the 0 0.950, okay, anytime we're interpreting a relative frequency, I want you to uh, convert it to a percent. Okay, convert 0 0.950, convert it to a percent, move the decimal two to the right. That's 95.0. So 95.0% of households. And then same thing. This this 95%, right, does not include just the three, right? It includes the three or less. So 95% of households have three cars or less. Okay, I'm looking for you to convert to percent. And then what's special about this 95%, they have three cars or less. And once again, anytime you're interpreting anything uh, that involves the word cumulative, you should always include the, the phrase or less. All right, so now let's interpret some cumulative frequencies and cumulative relative frequencies in the uh, second situation with group data. So here we're talking about a uh, number of hours that students uh, study per week. Okay, it's group data because we're breaking up our data into ranges. And let's, uh, let's interpret this 27 and this 0.711. Okay, 27. Now, once again, this 27, we got this 27 by adding 13 and everything before it. So 13 plus 10 plus 4. So this 27 is not just these people uh, who are doing 28 to 48.9. It also includes this range and also this range. Okay. So these 27 students spend 40.9 hours or less, okay? These 27 students spend 40.9 hours or less per week studying. You said it was 27? Who spend because it includes this range and then everything before it. So the easy way to write that is to say 40.9 hours or less. Okay, so I'm looking for the 27 and then this phrase. 40 hours or less. Okay. Anytime you're interpreting something that has the word cumulative, you always have to throw in the, the or less phrase. And then the 0.711, okay? Anytime you're doing relative frequency of any sort, convert it to a percent. So move the decimal two to the right. That'll be 71.1%. 71.1% 1 of students spend 40.9 hours or less per week studying. Okay, I'm looking for you to convert to a percent and then What's special about these 71.1%? They spend 40.9 hours or less per week studying. And anytime you're doing anything that has the word cumulative, throw in the word or less. We'll need some vocabulary now to describe the shape of histograms. Skewness refers to the location of the tail. So here's a histogram. I have a peak here, and then this part here on the left side is called the tail. 
So when I have a peak on the right side and the tails on the left side, that's called skewed left. Picture on the right, the peak is on the left side, that's the tail on the right side, okay? Peaks on the left side, the tail's on the right side, that's called skewed right. Okay, location of the tail is the direction of the skew. First picture, the tail's on the left side, skewed left. Picture on the right, tail's on the right side, skewed right. Picture in the middle, we have a peak in the middle and two tails that are equally on both sides. This is called symmetric. Now in the lab, I asked you, in terms of grades, would you like the grade for this class to be skewed left or skewed right? Okay. Speaking of grades in this class, do you want the grade to be skewed left or skewed right? So now let's talk about what skewed left really means and what skewed right really means. Skewed left. So most of the data is where? Right? The, the heights of the bars are telling you how many of the data you have. So I have a high bar on the right side. So most of the data is high. And then you have a few that are on the low side. That's skewed left, okay? Most of the data is on the high side, and then you have a few data on the left side. Skewed right, the peak is on the left side. That means you have most of the data is on the, the low side. And then you have a few that's high. So speaking of grades, do you want grades that are mostly low and then a few that are high? Or do you want grades that are mostly high and a few low? Or do you want grades that are in the middle and then you have a few high and a few low? That's, you, you decide. Next vocabulary I want to talk about is modes. So modes refers to how many peaks, the number of peaks. First picture here, there's one peak. It's called unimodal. So uni meaning one, unimode, though. Second picture, there's two peaks. So one right here, one right here. It's called bimodal. So bi meaning two, bimodal. Example one. Here we have some data. This data represents the monthly charges for long distance phone calls. Construct a frequency, relative frequency, cumulative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency distribution. Distribution just means make a table that has all these things. Using class width of three and using seven as the lower class limit of the first class. Now, let's go back to situation two where we were talking about the group data and we broke up the data into ranges, okay? These ranges are called classes. Uh, the lower number in each range is called a lower limit. The upper number in each range is the upper limit. And we also notice that the lower numbers are all going up by the same amount. The uppers are also going up by the same amount, and that amount is the class width. So what this is telling you to do is to break up the data into ranges, and I'm telling you how right here, okay? Class width of three. So when I make my ranges, my lowers should go up by three. My uppers should go up by three. Seven as the lower class limit of the first class. That's saying make seven the lower number of the first range. So my first range, I want it to be the seven to be the lower number of that first range. Okay. I don't know what the upper number is yet, and I, I, don't, I don't need to know right now. So class width tells me I want my lowers to go up by three. So let's make the lowers first. I don't know how many I need, so let me just do a couple. My lowers go up by three. So seven plus three is 10, plus three is 13, plus three, 16, plus three, 19. 
And I don't think I need to go anymore because if I look at my data here, it only goes up to 16.53. So I think I should, be, I should be good ending at 19. Now, how do you get the uppers? Okay, this upper number should be slightly below this 10. Okay, what number is slightly below 10? Nine. Now, if I look at my data, notice that my data has th two, two decimal points, okay? Your uppers should have the same decimal, uh, decimal places, sorry, decimal places as your data. My data has two decimal places. I want my data to also, or my uppers to also have two decimal places. So what number is just below 10 with two decimal places? Nine. 0.99, okay? That's just below 10, and it has two decimal, decimal places. The next one should be just below 13. What's just below 13? 12, 0.99. What number is just below 16? 15, 0.99. What number is just below 19? 18, 0.99. And then I should have one more upper, how do, you, how do you get this upper? Well, use your class width. Class width says that my uppers should go up by three, and they are, right? Nine to 12 is three, 12 to 15 is three, 15 to 18 is three, 18 plus another three would be what? 21, 0.99, okay? Those are my ranges. And then I need to do my frequency, Okay, frequency is just gonna count how many are between seven and 9.99. So we're gonna count. That's between, that's between, and I think that's it. So there's two numbers between seven and 9.99. And then let me tell you the other ones. There's three between 10 and 12.99. 5 between 13 and 15.99, and 2 between 16 and 18.99. And it turns out that we didn't have any data that's between 19 and 21.99. So we actually didn't really need that one anyway. And then we're going to find relative frequency, cumulative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency. And the way you do it is exactly the same as on the first couple pages that we talked about at the beginning of the lecture. So I won't do it here. Example 2. If I give you a histogram, can you go backwards? and make me a table. So the first question I wanna ask is, which situation is this? Is this a situation with the ungrouped data or is this a situation with the grouped data? Notice that the bar is over a range, okay? So that bar represents a range, which means this is gonna be the grouped data situation where we're gonna have ranges, okay? And the question is, how do, how do we make these ranges? If I go back to histograms for grouped data, Remember that I said the numbers on the x-axis are the lower limits. That means that these numbers on the x-axis are lower limits. And lower limits just means that these numbers are the lower, uh, lower number of each range, which in my ranges are gonna be 15 to something, 30 to something, 45 to something, 60 to something, 75 to something, 90 to something. Now, how, how do I find my uppers? Okay, so just like in the previous example, this upper should be slightly below this 30. So what number is slightly below 30? 29. And in the previous example, I said that your upper should have the same number of decimal places as your data. But here, we're only given the histogram, we're not given the data, so I actually don't know how many decimal places to use. So you can choose. You can use one decimal place, two decimal places, three decimal places, that's, that's fine. So 29.9, you can also do 29.99, you can also do 29.999, or even more than that. The next one should be slightly below the 45, that's going to be 44, and I'm going to choose to use one decimal place here, so 44.9. Next one, slightly below 60, that's going to be 59.9. 
Next one slightly below 75, 74, whoops, 74.9. The next one slightly below the 90, that's going to be 89.9. And then there's one more here. How would you find this last one? Well, figure out your class width. The lowers are all going up by how much? 15 to 30, that's going up by how much? You need to subtract 30 minus 15. Is 15, right? So it's going up by 15. From 30 to 45, that's going up by how much? So subtract 45 minus 30, that's also 15. Okay, 45 to 60, that's also 15. 60 to 75, that's also 15. So my lowers are all going up by 15. That means the class width is 15. That means my uppers should also go up by 15. Okay, so to find this last one, we're going to go up by 15. So 89.9 plus 15. 104.9. And let me also title this uh, this column. Uh, these numbers we got from these numbers right here, and they represented miles. So all these numbers are miles. And then we're, we're going to find a frequency. Now this is a frequency histogram, okay? Which means the heights represent the frequency. So the twelve is the frequency of the range 15 to about 30. So 15 to 29.9, that frequency should be 12. Okay, the frequency for 30 to 44.9, 30 to 44.9 is three. And then next one will be four, three, two. And I guess we didn't need this last one anyway. And then We'll need to find a relative frequency, cumulative frequency, and cumulative relative frequency, which is the same process as uh, that we did on the first two pages. That's it for today. Um, have a great day. See you next time.